Lucid dreaming is the experience of dreaming during sleep, but being aware that one is dreaming. And in some cases, being able to direct one's dream activities. So if you're in a lucid dream and you want to fly, for instance, some people report being able to initiate that experience of flying or to contort themselves into an animal or to transport themselves to wherever they want within the dream. I tried this device. Um, the way it worked is you put on the, the mask you, um, during a waking state, wide awake, and you'd look at the little light flashing in the corner. And then you'd also wear it when you went to sleep at night. And indeed, while I was asleep, I could see the red light, presumably through my eyelids, although for all I know, I, mean, I had opened my eyes. I don't know. I was asleep. And then because I was dreaming and I was experiencing something very vivid, I was able to recognize that I was dreaming and then start to direct some of the events within that dream. Now, lucid dreaming occurs in about 20% of people, and in a small percentage of those people, they lucid dream almost every night, so much so that many of them report their sleep not being as restorative as it would be otherwise. That during rapid eye movement sleep, people can solve problems or respond to external stimuli like for instance, they would give them math problems. They'd whisper in their ear oh. while they were in REM sleep, yeah. you know, what's two plus two? And people would say, even though they were paralyzed, yeah, yeah. apparently they could still move their mouth mm -hmm. because they'd say four or something <laughs> like that. Or they'd say, you know, what's your name? And people could respond. And yeah. so that in REM sleep, perhaps people, um, some elements of cognition are still um, active. I'm is, glad you brought that up. That, uh, what do you think of lucid dreaming is another thing we can't ask animals to do or can't ask them if they've done it. But um, we can certainly ask humans to do it, and some people can do it really well. And it would be really interesting to see in those people who could lucid dream really well whether they spend more or less time in this um, asymmetrical state where one area of the brain is in one state and another area of the brain is in another. So even though I don't recommend lucid dreaming on a normal day-to-day -day basis, if it's enough that can knock you out of a rut, um, one thing that happens with people with PTSD is they have the same repeated horrible nightmare, which is often a reliving of the day's trauma that, that, they, that they had. So maybe lucid dreaming can be used on occasion to be a powerful tool because there's so much plasticity that happens during REM sleep to knock you out of that rut of, of reliving that event and, and just change it, you know, and you could probably practice that during wakefulness. Um, rehearse the event that happened that was so traumatic and then just introduce a new element like you know now I'm safe now you know the sound that was associated with that really traumatic thing I should now associate with something else and next time I have that dream I'm going to change it so that sound is now this new thing that it should be associated with safety and that might be enough maybe I hope um, to knock you out of that repeated nightmare and maybe even start you on the path to recovery because if you can calm down about those nightmare states of sleep then maybe your locus surrealis which is involved in stress can also relax and you can do the erasure parts that need to be done it's pretty recent but i i need to dive into it again um, yeah. because i think i i didn't go as deep into it as i i should have no no but, but the one thing that you that you well you said many right things but one of the things you said is that they were able to cue the dreamer um when they, they knew when they were going to REM sleep and then they played the sound or had the odor now when you're normally asleep alone in your bed you're not going to be able to cue yourself but it might be that rehearsal enough before you go to sleep is enough to you know, help cue you uh, to that repeated nightmare, remembering what the nightmare is, and then figuring out how to cue yourself to do something different. For yeah. years, I had the same recurring nightmare yeah. over and over and over again, and it was so salient and so clear, and I'm not going to share what it is, because it's, um, it's not that it's that disturbing, it was mm -hmm. just, it, I think it was the emotional load of it, yeah. and just how salient certain features yeah. were, like one person in, um, who was a real life person, had a particular um, clothing yeah. on mm -hmm. and it's like and that just served as this cue and yeah. I don't know if I ever did any direct work to try and deal with it mm -hmm. but now it almost seems silly to describe it mm -hmm. oh yeah um, well dreams are but, usually silly to describe yeah, it was pretty, pretty silly but, but, your emotional but it was a pretty system, violent dream yeah and your emotional um, system is so geared up during yeah. REM sleep which is another thing we could talk about <laughs> yeah please um, yeah. I would love to yeah so locus ceruleus is mm -hmm. ideally suppressed mm -hmm. so we can't release norepinephrine yeah. we can't act out our dreams um, this uh, during these very emotionally laden um, mm -hmm. 
thoughts yeah. and, and storylines during sleep. This almost like starts to sound like a little bit of a built-in um, while sleeping trauma therapy. Mm -hmm. Because most trauma therapies involve trying to get people into states of um, counter to what most people think you actually want to get close to the trauma in terms of the narrative, that's but right. try and suppress the emotional right. activity of it. Or mm -hmm. and I guess that's the motivation for ketamine based therapies mm -hmm. for trauma. Mm -hmm. Or I've also heard, and this is still perplexing to me, that other waking based trauma therapies involve taking people the other way, making it very cathartic, take them to the peak of the emotional mm -hmm. response, but then allow that to finally cycle down into right. a more relaxed response. 